Hi folks, Robert Mantel here with the Trichotillomania Relief Specialist. You know, after having worked with hundreds of people from around the world for many, many years now, Glay and I have seen firsthand the terrible toll that especially long-term trichotillomania can take in a person's life. Sure, there's the obvious ones, the obvious damage to one's physical self. That's the one you can hardly avoid, right? Every time you see yourself in the mirror, you're reminded that you're still responding like a helpless puppet to this incredibly frustrating, altogether confusing behavior. I mean, why do you keep doing this? In the back of your mind, you keep asking yourself, even knowing full well the cost of continuing to do it. But then there are the less obvious costs as well, aren't there? There's the unseen toll of continued struggle with this. The part you don't see. The part that hits you where it actually hurts the most. And that's the part you do your best to turn away from, to not look at, to not think about. And that's the cost to your own self-image, your own self-esteem, your very identity. If you're still struggling with trichotillomania, I want you to know that it doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to let this challenge actually define you. You get to decide how you're going to define yourself. How do you actually do that? That's what we're going to talk about next. So what is self-image? What is self-esteem? Well, quite simply, our self-image is how we see ourselves, and our self-esteem is how we feel about ourselves. And what's underneath all that? It's our very identity. You see, our identity is a belief about self. It's who we think we are at the deepest unconscious levels. That's right. We may think we're, uh, we're our own bosses, but the truth is, like any other belief, our belief about who we are as a person is both created and lived out at the unconscious level. That's why, for example, no matter how many times we tell ourselves we're going to put ourselves out there at this party we're going to, we're going to look and feel confident when we get there, you know, there we go. Here comes that old, familiar insecurity creeping in, no matter how much we'd like to feel differently. Why? Because how we feel about ourselves, especially in relation to other people, can't not get lived out in the real world here because it's mental programming that's taking over. You can't consciously talk yourself out of that. How many times have you visited this or that trichotillomania support site or looked at Twitter or read stories about people who usually have struggled with trichotillomania for years and they've tried everything they know how to try to get better, but all this time later, they're still struggling with it and they've just gotten to the point where they've given up. A lot of times you'll hear them say things, write things like, you know what, I've just accepted that this is who I am. Have you ever felt that way? But here's the problem with that kind of thinking. When you do that, not only do you give yourself permission to stop trying, which obviously can't be helpful, but you dig the mental hole about as deep as you can get. You see, when you start to equate your behaviors, especially behaviors you don't like, with who you are as a person, you unwittingly make it about as difficult as it can get to break free from that behavior. Why? Because your brain, behaving in any way that's counter to your very identity, equals pain. It's the same problem with folks who think it's actually in their best interest to finally admit, you know, I'm an alcoholic or I'm an addict. I mean, these folks have a positive intent. They think that by finally admitting this to themselves, now they're ready to finally go to work to resolve the problem. And to some extent, this may indeed be true. But once you say to yourself, I'm an alcoholic, and you equate alcoholism with your very identity, what are you actually saying? You're saying I equal alcoholism. Well, how easy do you think it's going to be to give up alcohol if being an alcoholic is who you think you are at the most basic, most fundamental levels? Now, I don't think we have any kind of equivalent saying for trichotillomania, but I guess it's just who I am is close enough. It's bad enough. Effectively, you're telling yourself you equal a hair puller. Remember, people only tend to get to this point not because a hair puller really is who they are. It's just that they haven't yet found a way to beat it. And frankly, they're tired. They're exhausted. They're tired of trying. And that's, this is totally understandable. So giving into it by saying, I guess it's just who I am, makes a lot of sense. But, you know, it's not actually true. See, who you are is far more than your behaviors. You're far more than just the things you do. Do you need evidence for this? Think about this for a minute. Even if you spend an hour a day pulling your hair, I mean, if you add up all the time you spend pulling your hair all day, there's still 23 hours a day you're doing other things, right? Well, if we truly equal our behaviors, doesn't that make you at least 24 times more, whatever that might be, than a hair puller? 
The truth is we can change the things we do, even if we've been doing it for many years like hair pulling. But who you are as a person goes much, much deeper than that and really is much, much more than that. Think about this for a second. If you were to think about it, could you possibly consider that who you are as a person really is much more than just someone who pulls their hair for some number of minutes every day or every week? If you're not sure about this, take a moment and ask yourself, who are you that's much, much more than just someone who pulls their hair for some period of time each day? What are you that's actually bigger than that? Some people might say, um, well, I'm a student, uh, I'm an art lover, or a child, or an adult, or a reader, or I'm someone who's inquisitive, or someone who's curious, or I'm a good cook. Take all the time you need to answer this question personally for yourself. If you need to, stop this video until you come up with an answer, or maybe many answers. And when you do, take a few moments to go inside and fully consider that truth. That's right. And you know what else is true? Whatever you think you are, or whatever you just came up with just now, you're actually more than even that. I mean, could you perhaps consider that possibility? See, the moment we tell ourselves, this is all I am, or this is the best I can do, you automatically put mental boundaries on yourself. You put yourself in a box. You limit yourself by doing that. That's why I want to ask you, whatever it is you came up with that's truly more than just a hair puller, what are you that's actually more than even that? Could you consider the possibility that who you are is more than that? See, you are not your behaviors. You're a human being, right? Not a human doing. So then, what are you that's even more than that? I realize some of you may not be used to thinking in relatively expansive terms like this, so I encourage you to take all the time you need to fully consider who you are that's much, much more than just someone who pulls their hair and whatever you discovered a moment ago that was even bigger than that. Even if nothing else comes to mind right away, give yourself the gift of faith in the possibility that you are far, far more even than that. Some of you might say, well, I'm a brother or a sister or a mother or a father. Or, you know, now that I think about it, I'm, I'm a friend, I'm loyal, I care about other people, I give my best, I'm a hard worker. If you need to, stop this video and take all the time you need to consider your answer to this question. And when you do, once again, take a few moments to go inside and fully experience the truth of that statement. And whatever you think you are, that you really are far, far more even than that. And when you're ready, I want you to ask yourself, that's right, what are you that's even more than that? Because whatever, whoever you think you are, you're actually even more than that. Some of you may say, well, I'm a human being, or I'm a good citizen, or I'm a citizen of the world. I'm a part of the human race. Some of you may even realize, perhaps for the first time, that you're a child of God. Because you are a child of God. You're an incredibly special creation created in the image of God Himself. You have the gift of the breath of life. That makes you far more than that rock over there, or that chair over there, or the paint on the wall. It makes you even more than the very air you breathe. The sky itself the earth below you because you have the gift of life. Now, would you say that makes you just a little bit more than just a hair puller? Of course. Never allow yourself to give in to the thought that this is just who you are, and for that reason, you might as well stop trying. That's garbage. Never go there. Because I'm telling you from vast experience, you don't need to. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know what you came up with, okay? Hit that reply button below and leave me a note. What did you come up with? What are you that's more than just a hair puller? And what was it like for you when you first realized that? If you're watching this video at our blog site or at our YouTube channel, please go ahead and like this video and feel free to share it with anyone you believe could benefit from it. And do remember to subscribe to our channel, okay? That way we can notify you whenever we have new free content for you. If you want to visit our website and see what the heck we're all about, you can find us at www.trick-free.com. And we have contact information over there if you want to reach out to us about maybe your interest in, in getting some help. Again, this is Robert Mantell with the Trichotillomania Relief Specialist. Thanks so much for watching, and here's wishing you an amazing trick-free week.